Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so video just went live. The truth about what happened in NYC, it's going nuts. That's pretty sick. Biggest priority is on the WhatsApp integration. Got a lot of stuff done yesterday for actually connecting it up and I've got this sick flow. I went to this competitor site and checked out their flow and it was very like, I don't know, almost cluttered. You had to like add this phone number and do all these extra things and it was like super confusing even for me. And I just figured out this flow where you just scan a code and it does everything for you. So yeah, super sick, super exciting. Gonna work on that a little bit, but otherwise my day is full of calls today. And look at that, another subscriber for Jacob's Dev Club. If you're not in the Dev Club, what are you doing? Like you're missing out. We had the sickest call yesterday in the Dev Club. All of us just talking about tech, careers, hiring, everything. It was sick, it was very cool. Anyway, office, let's go. Umbrellas today. I look ridiculous. <laughs> Maddie's got my big umbrella. Look at this. Sorry. This, they can barely protect a sock. All right, we made it. Feelings today, now that it's Thursday, of the busiest week of your life. Honestly, I'm waking up sore, like stressed, but I'm like not stressed about anything. I just feel overly stressed. But that's alright. I got meetings all all today. I've blocked out like two and a half hours where I can just focus on a WhatsApp integration. So, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, overall I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited. It's just been a crazy week, and I'm mm. just tired. And I think I need a beer. That's what I mean. <laughs> Let's see. What's a bit parve is in here already? Oh, two dollars. Of course, parve the king. He's already in. What's cooking, bro? Bo opens his YouTube. Boom. That's what I like to see. Wild. It's actually pretty sick. Got this, uh, we've got web sockets going now. Cause what I've been doing with WhatsApp, I've been doing this web socket integration into my Nest backend. So what that means is that when someone connects WhatsApp, the problem with WhatsApp is it's a very like asynchronous connection. Like you've got to scan the code and then it's gonna do something in the background. And then how is the front end supposed to know what to respond to? Unless it's just like polling the database for updates. But I don't really want to do that. I would more rather just that sends a message down through a WebSocket. So I've been implementing that, which has been super sick. That's been cool. And essentially now what's going to happen is you're going to come in. This looks super ugly right now, by the way, but you'll click WhatsApp, connect. It's going to generate you, essentially what it's doing in the background is it's generating like a fake WhatsApp client. And then look, it just spat back a code, which I rendered into a QR code. You're going to be able to scan that and then connect with WhatsApp essentially to our server for just a split second where we can do all your ad admin permissions, add our phone number and like do everything for you. So there's no setup like on your side, you literally just have to scan it and then it'll send back instantly, I don't know, a web socket confirmation that everything is connected. And you should in theory have like a WhatsApp channel ready to go for your community. So that's pretty sick. Pretty sick. So yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Started it yesterday. Pretty good progress so far. So I just thought I'd get some extra space here because I forgot my AirPods today. Discovered the power of drinking water, guys. You guys need to drink water. I've been feeling trash for months. Turns out, when you drink a lot of water, you feel amazing. So yeah, it turns out I've just been baking for months. Look at that. Look at all those little minions in the offices over there. Absolute slaves to their computers. To, to be completely fair though, I am a slave to my computer. <laughs> so what's up? What's going on? I've um, just been planning, doing lots of planning, lots of thoughts, note taking, figuring out how sub's going to be scaled, figuring out hiring plan. Hiring plan. We've got to hire some people. Building a company, the reality of it, you know? Yeah, and there's a lot of channels with sub, it's not just sub, it's the YouTube channel. There's so much more than just like one business doing one thing. It's like starting from the ground up and then all these different elements, like personal elements and yeah. figuring out how to do it like sustainably and get good growth long-term instead of just 
smashing Instagram mm. posts out. It's a balance of trying to like build and not get too tunnel vision, but then also figure out how you're gonna get more people in. Anyway, I think the main thing I've just got to focus on is getting this integration done. And then uh, we move on to the next integration and this just allows more people to get in. Mm. And I think that's the first step. Just like finishing WhatsApp, finishing Slack. No, for sure. Finishing I'm in, Telegram. I'm like months in the future. You're in the present. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, dude, we got stuff to do right now. Yeah. All right. I'm going back to it. Okay. Catch ya. Bye. You know what is super wild though? This video that we just put out, the truth about what happened in NYC with the, with the sick big like yellow font letters and such on it. It's going absolutely viral. One out of 10. So yeah, we're, we're tracking right now. And this is my personal stats. 3,200 views in two hours and 23 minutes. That's, that's the most I've ever had. The, the second best one on this list, as you can see if it focuses, is that launching my startup video that at this exact time was at 2.6 thousand views. So that's, that's pretty insane. I really do think that one of the best strategies for anyone building like a startup or a business or anything is just content. I think real authentic content, and there's a few people in New York doing it obviously, but I think that real authentic content is potentially the secret. Getting people in and like intertwined in whatever you're building because they're interested in the journey. They're not just seeing the like end result and product and wow, look at me on LinkedIn and like I like achieved all this stuff. And it's like, no, like you saw what it was like transparently and authentically throughout the entire process. So yeah, I think that's a really cool thing. And I think in 2024 especially, no one should be building anything without some sort of authentic content documentation strategy. Unless you're in some sort of medical, that would be so weird. Imagine that, just like vlogging your patients. <laughs> yeah, but software specifically. All right, let's see. Game platform, WhatsApp. We'll generate that instance. All right, let's scan that. Okay, it's ready. It's so weird. Okay, so it's not, it's trying to, hmm, that is so strange. Okay, super strange issue with the web socket. I've got the client connecting. So what happens is we initialize the WebSocket connection with the client and my Nest.js backend, and then we're connecting WhatsApp through this like QR scan code logic that I've figured out, and then it comes up. And all it's meant to do right now is emit a single log, like just an event saying, connected, good, good to go. And it's not even doing that. So I need to figure out is there something that I'm missing here that's preventing this WebSocket service from actually sending anything? It's not even logging to my console. It's so strange. Okay, I'll figure it out. We'll see how we go. This is super interesting. When I initially launched this dev server, the handle connection where it says client and socket is the props and that client connected to client ID, that's cool. That's all like working as expected. But what's really interesting is that this after init, there's no log with web socket server initialized because what I'm expecting after I actually connect like the WhatsApp service, like if we have a look at, where is it? Here, client on ready. Console log, client is ready. I'm seeing that, but when I'm calling the WebSocket service notify connection acknowledged, nothing is coming through. So what I'm wondering is whether or not there's some initialization issue because I see the WebSocket service console log saying the client is connected, but I'm not seeing that initialization log coming through. So I wonder if there's an extra dependency injection I require. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through this step by step and we'll see if we can figure it out. This is fun. I love learning new things and honestly, this is the entire process of being a dev. And if any dev or any hiring manager or any engineering manager ever tells you that Googling, ChatGPT, anything is bad, then they are wrong. That is, I will die on that hill. The number one skill in being a good software engineer is learning how to problem solve and problem solve really well by yourself. 
That is the number one thing. I don't care how you find the answer. Chat GPT, Google, ask a friend, phone a friend, jump on Reddit, whatever it is. If you can find a solution, that is being a good dev and that's all that matters. So yeah, I'm gonna jump into chat GPT. I'm gonna jump into forums. I'm gonna figure this thing out. Let's go. Okay. I think I figured it out. I'm gonna take a bet right now. I'm gonna start filming before I actually try it. So the way that Nest works, you need to import, this is a classic bug, you need to import all services and modules into other modules that are using them. For example, I've got this WebSocket service here and I've also got this WhatsApp service right here. Now, this WebSocket service has, you know, all of these standard functions and it's got a module and this WebSocket service is actually being exported and imported right into the main app module. Now, that's all cool. That's why I'm seeing the initial client connected message. That's cool. The problem is I'm actually using this WebSocket service inside WhatsApp, but notice this. There is no import. So I think, I think that if I import this here, that should solve it. Okay. Ooh. Yep. Okay. 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 And then if we go and test this out. Oh my gosh. I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work. Okay, here we go. Watch this flow, watch this flow. We'll jump in here. We'll connect WhatsApp. We've got an ugly button right now, but we're gonna initialize that connection. It's gonna come in here. It's going to try and generate for me a virtual version of WhatsApp. And then in a second, there we go. Okay, it returned that QR code. I'm gonna get my WhatsApp out. Uh, I've already got it right here. We're gonna link a device. Let's give this a go. Scan that up. Okay. And let's see. Damn it. Nothing happened. <laughs> what? I could have sworn something was gonna happen. Okay. I'm gonna have to do some digging still. I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that little debug session. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, oh my gosh. I am such an idiot. I, I figured it out. I figured out what's going on. Check this out. So. If you take a look at this WhatsApp service right here, let's just go back. <clears throat> okay, so if you take a look at this WhatsApp service right here, have a look at what's going on just in here. So we've got some clients, we've got some QR codes, we've got termination timers, so this is just to like automatically close that virtual instance. And now I am importing the private read-only WebSocket service, a different service from this WhatsApp service into here. Now, you may be wondering at first glance, that all looks fine. You can just use the WebSocket service as I am, just like this, this.websocketservice.notifyconnection acknowledged. Until you start thinking about how do you normally import different services in a Nest.js project. Hmm, where is the constructor? Honestly, this is like basic 101 stuff and I completely missed it somehow. Look at this. If we just take this away and we actually jump in here, create a constructor, there we go. Thank you, Copilot. And now that has been constructed, the import with the WebSocket service, we have imported it, we are now good to go. And sure enough, I tested it out and right away we got a notification, watch this. Okay, so we'll jump in here, we'll connect, WhatsApp, connect. We'll start that initialization. We'll open WhatsApp while we're here. Okay, we've got our code, we'll scan that and then Watch this, you ready? Notify connection acknowledged called. And what that means is that it hit my log. That's all I wanted to happen. Okay, now we can actually move to receiving those WebSockets on the front end. So good, we figured it out. That is how you debug. Keep moving step by step through everything and go, did I do this right? Shout out to ChatGPT, especially the 4.0 or whatever the new version is called. It's a lot smarter. Great, okay, great job guys. Yes, you know, my monthly payout, can yeah. I go into your portal and see, okay, of this $100 payout, here are the members. Interesting, I can, I can definitely add that. Let me, um, let me add a note of that. You'll definitely be able to see, that's super awesome, cool. That's so interesting coming from the accounting brain side, like that's, <laughs> that's so cool. This okay. is probably way down the line. Yep. But integration into like QuickBooks Online. It sounds like a lot of people are gonna use like QuickBooks Zero, something along those right. lines. How would you bring people in, I guess? Yeah, I'll be sure to let you know as soon as that Slack integration's on its way out. Cool. For sure. Okay, so awesome to meet you. Um, let me know if there's anything else I can do in the meantime. We're gonna just heads down build, make sure this is all working and... Woo! All right.
another creator call uh, that was a accountant. That's so cool. It's just so awesome. There's so many different niches, so many industries that we're covering and we're making paid community available for. So sick. Yesterday I had this call with this guy. He's like, he does one-on-one -on -one coaching with like LinkedIn people and, well, not LinkedIn people, like people that want to grow on LinkedIn specifically for like writing better posts and doing like all sorts of different growth hacks on LinkedIn. And he just like, he's been doing one-on-one -on -one strategy for so long. And I was like, dude, why don't you just like get all of these people that nerd out on everything to do with LinkedIn growth hacks and put them all in one place where they can just like chat with each other. And it was just like, pfft, like mind blown. Cause that's super valuable. Like imagine if that's your niche, that's what you're super interested in and you can just connect with those people. Just like my dev club, Jacob's dev club. Guys, I'm not kidding when I say the dev club is going wild. Check this out. I wake up in the morning to just millions of messages of everyone in the dev club going nuts. And that's just like the coolest thing that I'm not even there and everyone's just like, chatting it's so sick anyway if you're not in the dev club jump in jacob's dev club link down below otherwise start your own club let's go i think maddie's bought some bagels let's have some food and then we'll continue the web sockets that's what i'm talking about This is sick. This is so sick. Yeah. Okay, so you jump in, connect the platform, WhatsApp, connect the WhatsApp. We're gonna create the virtual instance. So now I'll get my phone out, got my scanner ready to go. Asynchronously, watch this. It's gonna connect to my virtual instance and then WebSocket to my front end. Ready? Boom. Do you see that? WhatsApp connected. What that just did, my virtual instance my phone connected to it and then it sent something back down to my client. Holy damn, that's so sick. That means that we can now asynchronously completely do everything on behalf of the user who's connecting their WhatsApp account and they have to do zero config. Oh, that is sick. WhatsApp, web sockets are done. We are in baby. That is so sick.